Okay, so uh, welcome to the live, fourth year of the live pitch. Um, this is the event where we give startups and early stage companies a chance to pitch at some real games investors who are going to introduce themselves in a minute, uh, and business development people who actually do understand what you do for the most part. Uh, my name is Fred Hassan. I've been running this session and developing it over the last four years. Uh, and I have a small company that also specializes in that area. And um, we were responsible for putting out the call, asking for a one-pager. This is so that you understand how the process works through the Nordic Game mailing list. There's a call. Anybody who wants to enter this contest puts out a one-pager to us. And then I have a, a number of people who look over the games for about a week uh, and the proposals that come in. And then we, we pick the finalists, which quite often is very difficult. Um, but quite often it's also very easy because Sometimes, uh, and I heard Doug say this in the last session, uh, people are asked to put a, uh, their business plan together and what the business is around their game, and actually what happens is that every of the five topics is filled up with what the game is about. And uh, nobody tells me anything about um, the business and what, what money you're going to get back on your investment. So sometimes, some of you make it quite easy um, for us to, to say that this wasn't possible. <laughs> There's also one other thing about this in doing it live, and this is something I've heard as a bit of a criticism. Why would you want to pitch in front of all your competitors uh, and give, give away your game idea and everything like that? Well, I've worked in television, film, and general media as well as games, and, and there's a simple reply to that. Um, it's very easy to have an idea but it's another thing to actually be able to put an idea together and make a business out of it, or make a success out of it. And okay, sometimes you need a bit of luck. So, and anyway, in the media industry, there is other, one other thing you should remember, is that most people looking over your shoulders or looking at you, everything else that isn't theirs is crap, okay? So they, they're always going to think that their idea is better and the one they're working on is better. And then, they will copy you, but once you've been a success. So don't worry about this. This actual event is about uh, getting to be in front of some real investors who know what they're talking about and can help you. And, and it is also, partly also, to get you to understand what it is to be able to do this. And that's, that means that people that we've helped to prepare their pitches uh, and, and develop them so that they can go forward with some confidence here. Uh, and all the rest of you should all get a lot out of this. Um, and so th this is what the process is, is meant to be. Um, this year, I just wanted to say, instead of getting on with it, that we've made some changes. And so basically what we want to do is try and reflect the kind of situation that is out there at the moment. And at the moment, things are changing fast in terms of, it's not only the fact that you as developers are able to go direct to market if you dare. Uh, and again, there were some very good comments made about that in the last session. Uh, about if you try and make a game without understanding what you need to do about marketing, then you're going to give yourself a big, big problem. Um, but but um, um, we, what we've tried to do today is reflect the, how the chart times are changing. So, we've given you, the audience, a chance to vote for, the, for, for who you think is the best game today. And we've also opened a crowdsourcing, um, a crowdfunding site with a Swedish company called Frantidskutet, <laughs> my Swedish is non-existent. <laughs> but anyway, we're very grateful to them. And those of you might know, does anybody been voting on the, on the Frantidskutet site? Yeah, a few of you. Okay, well that site has got a very moderate ambition of raising some money that will go to the winner. Um, that will be a prize, cash prize to the winner. But, and and um, then if the winner does well, they'll be asked to contribute it back to, to the fund for a, future, for a future event like this. But basically, there is, if, you look at, if you look for the site, um, there, is, there is a way in which you can vote there if you pay a minimum of 100 um, Swedish kronen. Um, so, so you're going to vote. The, the, the crowd source, uh, crowdfunding site is going to contribute 33% of the votes. And these, because they really are the experts, they're going to contri contribute 33% plus one. So if there's a tie for, any of the com for, for one of the companies when we've aggregated all the votes, then the vote, whichever company this group of people thought was the best, they're going, that, that one will probably win um, if it's one of the ones that's tied. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I'm not sure if it does. Um, 
what else do I need? There's also some other prizes, because what we tried this year was to ask um, the dragons, who usually got a bit of something to give, um, if they would be willing to offer some sort of prizes. So there are some other prizes, um, which uh, Justin from uh, the European Games Group is offering, which is a three-day marketing, monetization, and distribution for your online game, um, a training thing in, in Munich for up to three people in the company. And then uh, there are also Doug Richard from the School of Startups in London is offering three places on his bootcamp, startup bootcamp, with travel paid, uh, not accommodation, but with travel paid to London uh, when the next one is. And what we decided to do is, instead of trying having a voting system, Doug can give those to whichever companies he would like to, uh, and, and Justin can give that prize to whichever company he picks. Now, the other thing about today is that we're not going to announce the prize, the prizes today. The prizes are going to be announced tomorrow at lunchtime, probably around 12.15, uh, when you're all sat down uh, stuffing your faces. Um, so that's, those are the changes for this, for this, for this year. And so the dragons having all the say in this, we've tried to introduce a little bit of democratic uh, uh, and, peer group, uh, and peer group approval or disapproval. And hopefully it won't be based on whether you're Norwegian or Icelandic or Swedish or, or, or um, Danish, and hopefully you won't vote on tribal lines or vote on whichever the best game is. Okay, now that's probably enough for the moment. Um, I'm going to ask the dragons to to uh, introduce themselves. Um, Doug, would you like to present who you are? Uh, hi, my name is Doug Richard. I'm the founder of School for Startups, which is a social enterprise that teaches entrepreneurship around the world. And personally, I'm an angel investor, which means I take money out of my pocket and put it into startups, and they go off and lose it. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Doug. My name is Paul Hayden. I'm from London Venture Partners. We invest just in game companies, just in Europe. Um, so, investing in companies like Supercell, and I'm also a shareholder in uh, Unity as well. Um, hi everyone, my name is Mary Carty and I'm from Ireland and I work with lots of startup companies as a mentor and I help them get investment ready. So my name is Justin, I'm um, one of the founders of European Games Group. Basically we, we invest on the marketing side uh, without uh, being as forceful as a publisher uh, towards the developer. So you keep a lot of freedom. Um, and personally, my, my background is in building community-driven products and scaling those, um, especially on marketing and monetization products. Yeah, hi, my name is Ian Bavstock. I am mostly these days involved in early stage games companies as an investor. Prior to that, though, I founded and built Kuja Entertainment, one of the UK's largest game developers. So I've done a lot of my time pitching game ideas to most publishers over the last 20 years. You know, I don't know what every share they're taking, but let's say, for example, if they're taking more than 30% uh, you know, or more, and you're already giving away 30% to Apple you're hopefully not going to end up with much, so your, your break even you know, is going to be a lot higher than, than it should be. Um, and I would look at way, I would look at just what are the free ways in which just to not give away your revenue and just to uh, be smart about it. You're also talking about two different, completely different business models. We're talking about Know, getting your local startups or whoever else to, uh, I don't know, sponsor slots and stuff like that. So I would say focus on the key thing first and get that absolutely right. So then you can go and show them, hey, this is a fantastic thing. You know, you've got to come on board here before, I don't know, the next coffee chain takes it over. Do you know what I mean? Focus on the thing that's most important. Mm -hmm. I think, um, is this intended to be a German-only product or a global product? A global product. So have you ever commuted anywhere else? <coughs> in so Europe? Like, yeah. No, you see, because like, I've, I've suffered through the commutes in Tokyo and in San Francisco and in LA and in New York and in London. And there's not a single commute that I've ever been on where I could have actually played. In Tokyo, I had my head shoved up on somebody else's underarm in the most crowded streets in the world. In LA, I'm behind the seat of a wheel of a car sitting in back-to-back -back traffic would be illegal to do this. In New York, I'm on a series of trains where I have neither Wi-Fi nor 3G access, and in London, there are no points. It's just one long, rainy blur. So, <laughs> it's not clear to me 
It's just not clear to me that you've actually had the life experience to realize that not all commutes are held equal. And that was apparently your target market. Still, to come up and prepare for that, I'm just going to ask, these are two non uh, Nordic contestants. What did you what did you think? What, just some general advice that you might give those guys in terms of what you've seen them and uh, what they can go forward. Um, and which ones do you like to talk a bit for too? Yeah. I think Sean needs to build his team. That's the key point. Build the team. Build the team. I think you're bringing in terms of the second presentation. They clearly is a strong team there. I'd love to have seen that first, hear more about that team because it would have been the rest of the team. Okay. Yeah. And the other couple? Yeah, I think they're both unique and interesting ideas, but I think there's some more work there just to, you know, have an open mind and just sort of keep iterating and testing ideas, not just in the home countries, but other countries, because that's how you learn. You don't think that, um, I mean, I know that advertisers quite often try adverts in Northern Ireland or somewhere small and, and discreet where they can just get a feedback Sort of the, the, the cheapest feedback way that I tell people is if you think you've got a great concept and, and test it with two other concepts you don't think are so great and just put some ads, run some mobile ads, run some ads on Facebook, spend fifty or hundred dollars and see how many clicks you get. And that's the cheapest and easiest way. That's very cool. <laughs> Both ideas were presented in a way that was relatively small. So uh, the, the pitch for, for Spy Day ended basically at 100,000 daily active users and 100k in revenues. And uh, Sean's idea um, ended at a couple million total registered users. And I think it's much more important to think how to, how to scale that and if it's actually possible to scale it. For, for me, I, I do like the Spy Day team and the idea very much, but um, I. My, my biggest question mark would be um, do you actually achieve uh, valid gameplay experience and immersion experience at 300,000 out in one city? Okay. Uh, just nobody, no one seems to forget. It would be nice if you told me how I was going to make money, what would it be in you know, sort of a business pitch? So, in the spirit of that, you know, if you want to do business, let's do business. You want to talk about your game, talk about your game. Sure. So, I like both, but I thought it was a business pitch. Nobody told me about how I'm going to make money. Also, smart money. As an entrepreneur, it's, it's great to talk to people who can give you the right context, etc. But you should not depend on functions like plant marketing, etc. You have to have the knowledge to execute the plan that you're proposing internally or extremely close by, so that you can actually hire them. And the investor should not be critical to executing the plan. Doesn't happen. Okay, yeah, and for a very good reason. Because let's say, because I used to run a, a venture fund, and is when I put money into a venture fund, mm -hmm. I want the money to go into the company. Yeah. Not into buying someone else out. Okay. 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 Yeah. And so as a rule, there's exceptions mm -hmm. in this world, but as a rule, the new money in dilutes the old money and everyone carries forward. Mm -hmm. It's an angel's dream to be bought out. Yeah. I've spent nights hoping so. Oh, okay. Would, okay. Yeah, yeah, would come along. Yeah. Yeah. Thing as well, which is a really nice point, is that your community is actually building, helping you build that product for you, and that's a really nice and smart way to go. I mean, if you look at what happened in Pinterest with Beaker recently, I mean, it was unbelievable the reach that they got just from being on Pinterest. That's so Pinterest friendly, it's not funny. So, I mean, go, go and be very strategic and smart about how you use that crowd to pay you money to, you know, do whatever you want. retention rates are going to be, you know, you want to know how much you're going to be spending on user acquisition for each new yeah. user, um, what you think the lifetime value is going to be, because it becomes a whole map. Yeah. And the second thing is, um, there is so many in the educational space and, and aimed at um, um, younger children uh, right now that you have to be really fast. So after the 50k proof of concept initial stage, which is, which is basically pre seed which is friend and family, or bootstrapping, then you need to raise enough to really be fast on, on all levels. I wouldn't <coughs> underestimate your uniqueness either. Um, you're appealing to a market segment that does not have a lot of attention paid to it right now, mm -hmm. yet. And the mere fact that you're different is useful in marketing. And you're not going after the, where everyone else is. And I can see, you know, for example, in, you mentioned things like Etsy. Um, I know Etsy quite well. Um, 
they're a marketing part. Uh, self-publishing is only self-publishing in this world. You know, it's only the games industry we talk about in that context. Every other company in the world self-publishes, right? Every other company in the world has marketing and sales and business. So it's only in the games industry where we have this kind of disjunction. And thus, the, the normal marketing tactic for highly differentiated product is to find partners who bring you to market to, that help themselves. And whether it's Etsy or not on the high street, who I think, for example, if you're familiar with them, they, they do artisanal products and they reship them in the UK, or their equivalents in the US, you've got, you've got lots of avenues to women of a certain age, as we used to call your market, um, as politely as possible. Um, but I think you do. You have many different marketing avenues through non-traditional relationships that, um, to Paul's point, would give you lots of access to a group of people that others don't, that might give you the leisure time to build this company organically in a way that other people don't get that 